And I hope you will give us a ring this half hour. We're talking about how you can slow the aging process and hopefully prevent the diseases and other health conditions that we've just come to associate as being normal with a part of aging. The key to this is slowing down aging at the cellular level. The goal is not necessarily to live not necessarily to live longer. We want to increase not our lifespan, but our health span. Isn't that an interesting thought? Live healthier longer. Well, Dr. Sandra Kaufman is the creator of the Kaufman Protocol designed to slow seven different pathways of aging that leads to all the aches and pains, disease, diabetes, cancer, all those things that we've come to just think of as normal part of getting older. She says we don't have to put up with that stuff as you start to lose your hair and things start to sag a bit. Dr. Kaufman is on the Health Call Live expert line. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am well, thank you. Younger than I look, at least on the inside. So what's wrong with how we think of aging today? Well, I think many things are wrong with what we think of aging today. Uh, I think that people think that it is inevitable and that there's nothing you, t- you can do to control it. And I think we need to change the way people are thinking so that we can make people's lives better. So what's the big takeaway from what we're going to talk about today? We are going to talk about the idea that we age because our cells age and that we age for very specific reasons and that scientists know about these reasons and they have done a really terrible job of spreading this information to the general public. And so the idea today is to teach people or to tell people that there are, in fact, very reasonably simple things that you can do to make your life better. There are some things in your book, the Kaufman Protocol, that you do a really great job of explaining a lot of this by... uh, thinking of our body as a factory and it lays out a number of supplements and other things you can buy at the drugstore to help you fight this cellular aging you just talked about. We're not talking about a diet here and and you're not selling these products. You don't have the Kaufman line of uh, supplements so I want to get that out front. You're just putting information out there and hoping we can all use it to improve the quality of our lives. So let's go back to this whole idea of our body as a factory. So in any factory there is a manager. There's somebody who says this is what we're going to build and this is how we're going to build it in our body what plays that role but the 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 category that sort of tells the factory what they're making how to do it um, all the rules and regulations um, i call it the company operating manual i suppose you could make it the person but it's the manual uh and in my world that breaks down to our dna Okay. So what goes wrong with the DNA in the aging process? How does it break down and then give false instruction? So DNA, basically, you've got two big problems with DNA overaging. The first one has to do with telomeres. Telomeres are the caps of your DNA, and they get shorter with age. And it's sort of like uh, the fuse on the end of a bomb. The shorter it gets, the longer or the shorter your life is going to be. Okay. Um, the more stress you have, et cetera, it's just not good. The good news is, however, there are things that we can do to make our telomeres longer, so that's kind of crucial. And then the second thing has to do with epigenetic modification. Uh, which sounds a little bit complicated, but it has to do with methylation uh, sitting on top of your DNA that sort of controls what proteins get uh, made, um, and this gets altered by what we eat in the environment and, and all sorts of things. And the good news is we can reverse some of the evil uh, epigenetic modification issues as well. So in our bodies, in our factories, everybody needs energy, and that's mitochondria in our body that produces energy. What can we do? Do to keep the mito- what goes wrong with mitochondria and what can we do to fix that? Fantastic. Uh, you're absolutely right. So the mitochondria are little energy sources for our factory and ourselves. There are two basic reasons why your mitochondria fail over time. Uh, the first one has to do with the fact that we use oxygen in our electron transport chain. Everyone knows we need oxygen. Um, unfortunately, somewhere between 2 to 5 and even 10% of oxygen gets radicalized, which means it sort of picks up an extra, extra electron. And what that does is it destroys our tissues. It attacks DNA, it attacks lipids, and it makes them sort of fall apart over time. Now, your body's 
pretty smart, and it makes endogenous uh, radical scavengers, of course. People know about catalase and glutathione and that sort of thing. But over the course of time, your body can't make enough scavengers to get rid of the free radicals. So it sort of blows itself up over time, but we can sort of stop that with um, extra free radical scavengers. So that, that's problem number one. And then problem number two is one of the rate-limiting issues of the electron transport chain is, is a molecule called uh, nicotinamide. You need it to shuttle electrons around. And over the course of time, you need more nicotinamide, but your body has less for a variety of other reasons. So anyone over the age of 40, 45 is probably nicotinamide deficient, um, and therefore they're sensing that their energy levels are low. And by repleting that, frequently your energy levels will sort of bounce back to where you were in your 30s. And so is nicotinamide something I can find at a health food store? Where do I, how do I get more nicotinamide in my body? So what's really interesting about nicotinamide is there, there's a nicotinamide war going on right now. So the first thing to come out was nicotinamide riboside by a company called Chromadex, uh, and they sort of had the monopoly. And then another company came out with nicotinamide mononucleotide, and they're sort of battling it out. Um, to sort of get around that, someone created an IV nicotinamide, and now there's nicotinamide patches. Um, I don't have uh, a horse in this race, so I don't really, I can't really tell you which is better and which is not. But the absolute idea is that you need to replete it somehow. Okay, so find nicotinamide on the store shelves and take the recommended dose is what I'm hearing there. You, you talked a moment ago about the, the free radical oxygen damage, so that's why there's so much talk about antioxidants, right? That is correct. That is correct. Um, you definitely need some free radicals in your body, so they do serve as messaging, messengering systems, and so people sort of get upset about that. But there's no way you can actually get rid of them all. So absolutely, over the course of time, we all need free radical scavengers. And what's, what's really interesting is even kids need some free radical scavengers, because one of the reasons that our skin burns when we're out in the sun is that uh, the, the, the UV radiation creates free radicals, and it creates burn, and it destroys our DNA. So even if I put my 13-year-old redhead kid out in the sun without free radical scavenging, she burns. When I give her oral supplementation of, of scavengers, she doesn't burn. So the stuff is really effective, and it's very easy to see how effective it is. It's, it's truly amazing. So in any manufacturing facility, any place, you're going to find some level of security. And in our body, that role is played by the immune system. And of course, we know your immune system can go off the rails, and you have a number of different conditions there but as we as we age it tends to just get out of control so you need to manage the immune system what what in your protocol does that job uh, so several things to do it. Um, just to sort of back up what you said, right, your immune system does get completely out of control. So instead of helping us, it hurts us. And there's three major take-home points in that category. Uh, number one, we are all in a state of chronic inflammation. Uh, and inflammation causes DNA damage, and DNA damage can cause cancer, which is not good. Um, our immune systems are less able to fight off infection. So older people get infected very easily, and this is why older people don't respond as well to vaccines. Um, and then lastly, the cells that are responsible for your immune, your immune system become more likely to create cancer. So there's a huge uh, increase in incidence of lymphomas and leukemias. So a lot of uh, my system, depending on how old you are, um, basically can reinforce or rebuild your, your immune system. So most people on my protocol, one of the things that they sort of notice sort of, you know, months into it is they're like, holy cow, I don't get sick anymore. Um, which is kind of nice. I, I personally work in a pediatric hospital where, you know, people are usually pretty ill, just from little kids running around uh, with runny noses, and no one gets sick around me ever. <laughs> kind of <pretty> cool. <laughs> We're going to talk more about the protocol and the Panacea protocol specifically in just a minute. But so we've kind of set the stage here and explained how aging on the cellular level works. If I follow your protocol, how am I going to feel different? When am I going to notice a change, and how is that going to feel? So that sort of depends on how old you are, uh, what medical issues you have, and it's what, what's bugging you, essentially. Um, so people that are generally uh, uh, tired a lot. So people come to me with a variety of complaints. The biggest one is, I'm really tired. I just don't have the energy that I used to. Um, I can usually make that better between 10 days to two weeks. People come to me with, oh, my back is killing me, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's usually a two-week to three-week thing. Um, 
And then over the course of a month to two months, people just feel generally better. They're sleeping better. They're not getting sick. They have more energy. They're thinking more clearly. Um, it's sort of a non-specific sense of just being better. The Panacea Protocol, I want to walk through uh, some of the uh, elements in that protocol. First one is something called astaxanthin. What is it and what makes it important? So astaxanthin is one of my all-time favorite agents ever. It, um, it actually comes from a unicellular organism, uh, basically algae. You'd find it in uh, bird baths around the world, and it's a green, uh, sort of goopy-looking stuff. But when it gets stressed, it creates this fantastic red substance, and it does this to protect itself from physiologic stress. So it protects our cells just as it would protect the cell from which it came. Um, so it, it helps your mitochondria, and the other really amazing thing is it really boosts your immune system. Um, it also blocks some of the inflammatory issues, so it blocks something fancy stuff called nuclear factor kappa beta and tumor necrosis alpha, which I don't expect anyone to know, but it lowers the um, sort of the stress of chronic inflammation in your body, and it increases your immune system. So there are absolutely no downsides at all taking astaxanthin. It's fairly inexpensive, and I actually think everyone should be on astaxanthin. Okay, let's move on to carnosine. What is its role in, in the protocol? So carnosine, what is it's remarkable about it is it does two things. Number one, it's, uh, it too is a free radical scavenger, so it helps your DNA. So that's pretty cool. And the second thing it does, which is truly amazing, it's called a transglycosylating agent. And what that does is it gets rid of some of the harm from glucose affecting your cells over time. And glucose can be a pretty nasty element. I mean, it's the sugar that we all need to generate energy, but at the same time, if there's too much of it, it gets this sticky nature and it just attacks all kinds of things in our body. You are absolutely correct. Uh, in my categories of aging, the last category I call waste management, which is exactly that. It has to do with glucose. And I'm losing you again, so I'm going to move ahead while we try to... Disappointing phone connection here, but we're going to try to soldier on. Uh, terostilbene and resveratrol. Now, resveratrol is the stuff I think people have heard about. It's in the skin of grapes. Uh, it's an excuse for some people to drink red wine. But there's also terostilbene that is more bodily, it's more easily absorbed in our body. And tell me the role that it plays. So they are very closely related on a molecular level. You are absolutely right. Resveratrol comes from uh, grapes. Terastilbene comes from blueberries. Um, and they do phenomenal things around your body. Uh, they act as they two ends. They're free radical scavengers. Um, probably the most important thing is the sirtuin activation, which has to do with pathways around your body that help prevent that aging. Uh, I want to press ahead here in the short minutes we have left. Tell me about metformin. It's a drug that is commonly prescribed for diabetes, and you say that practically all of us should be on this medication, right? Oh, gosh, yes. And I really hope the phone connection doesn't break off right now because this is, this is kind of crucial. Met, metformin has been around for 50 years. Many, many, many millions of people have been on it. And in a fabulous retrospective study that came out a few years ago, demonstrated that it just did amazing things for morbidity and mortality. Um, in addition to decreasing your glucose, it activates anti-aging pathways. It changes the mixture of bugs in your gut to make you healthier. It just does a, a list of phenomenal things for you. And the side effects are pretty minimal. So when you talk about risk-benefit ratio, it is just an extremely great medication for longevity. So if I go to my doctor and say, hey, I, I'd like to be on metformin, what kind of a response are they going to give me? 
I think that's going to depend on who they are more than anything else. Um, if, if physicians are sort of up and coming and understanding where we're going with all this, many of them are very proactive and will, you know, g give it to patients, uh, and I think that's appropriate. Um, some physicians that are a little baby old school are going to say, that's ridiculous, that's crazy. Um, the good news is that there are companies popping up on the Internet that can get you medications that your physicians don't necessarily agree with. Um, so these things are gettable. It's just a little bit uh, more complicated than people might want. So uh, if I'm taking statins right now, as you know, millions of people are, uh, can I, following your protocol, can I get away from statins? Or is there a risk to statins for me and in, in my metabolism? So I have to say I'm not a huge fan of statins. I think when you look at the risk profile, I think it's kind of elevated. Now, for people that have very high cholesterol um, and lipid profiles, et cetera, it's probably necessary. So I don't want to scare people away off their statins. But I think that there are other ways to skin a cat. And I will tell you that when you go to choose a protocol in my world, if you have uh, the need for statins, then we put you on a variety of more um, specific agents that can lower your, your intrinsic level. So theoretically, I can get people off of statins. But if you are on statins, you can still follow this protocol. You just may not need them over the course of time. I cannot believe how quick time has flown by. We are out of it right now. Uh, Dr. Sandra Kaufman is the author of a book called The Kaufman Protocol. It's available online at Amazon, of course. And then she also has an app that you can use that will kind of guide you through her protocol. And the uh, Health Call Live sponsor, Fort Wayne Custom Rx, has high-quality pharmaceutical-grade versions of all the supplements we've discussed on the program. You can see them, but you can also buy them online and get them lots of places. Dr. Kaufman is not necessarily selling these things. She just wants you to understand that you can affect aging. Last 20 seconds go to you, doctor. What do you, uh, where do you want to leave people with? Um, people are going to leave thinking, oh my goodness, what is the protocol? I'm so confused because that's what I usually get. So I recommend that people go to the website. It's called the CalcinProtocol.com. Most of the stuff I talk about is on there in sort of a watered down version. And I have an email address that comes directly to me. I answer all questions. Sometimes it takes me a little bit of time because I get sort of inundated. But I will, you know, interact with any individual that wants to know more so I can help them along. And, and it's again, all linked up I, right now on the Health Call this. Live facebook page we have to run thank you dr kaufman and thank you for joining us we will see you next week